coming back in. The James Bond movies, at least the ones that Daniel Craig's been involved with, the first one was great. Casino Royale was a near perfect movie. Then you have uh, Quantum of Solace, which was eh, not good. Then you have Skyfall, which in my opinion is really, really good. And then you have the fourth one, Spectre, which was really disappointing. Honestly, not a good movie at all. So with how these franchises have been, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a hit because it's every other one is good. So hoping it's good. It's got a great cast. And I'm looking to see uh, this farewell of a movie for Daniel Craig as Daniel uh, as James Bond. So that's why it's my number four. What's going on, everyone? So welcome to my latest review. This is, of course, for No Time to Die, which, holy cow, we have been waiting for this film for quite some time. At least for myself, I have. This is a film that I still remember when Danny Boyle was helmed to direct this, and I was very excited to see his style. Then, obviously, they changed directors, and then it was supposed to come out in late 2019. Then it was supposed to come out in early 2020. I believe it was April 2020. Never forget that because in March, I still remember buying my tickets, you know, pre-ordering them, and then the pandemic hits. Then it was supposed to come out in November of 2020, and then, of course, they changed the date to now, obviously, the date that we have now. Now, fortunately enough, I was able to see this at an early screening. I'm filming this on a Wednesday. It's coming out, obviously, on Friday. And this is a movie, again, I was very much so looking forward to, and it's a film that is part of, obviously, the Daniel Craig James Bond franchise. And... James Bond is a character that I haven't really seen too, too many of his movies. Daniel Craig movies aside, I have seen a couple of the Sean Connery movies, um, the first couple. And then I did watch, um, I believe it was a Pierce Bronson one. And then I also watched um, Her Majesty's Service. Actually, I do have to give a shout out to my one friend, Eric, who actually had me watch this um, in late 2019 in preparation for No Time to Die, which, again, was two years ago. So... Again, this is a movie I was very much so looking forward to. And in terms of the James Bond movies that Daniel Craig's in, I'm not a fan of Quantum Solace or Spectre, but I am a fan, huge fan, of Casino Royale and then, of course, Skyfall. These two are amazing. That's why I own them on 4K. Now, for this movie, I'm not going to really explain anything in terms of No Time to Die, in terms of the premise, because you've probably seen this movie, and if you haven't, you're going to watch this. That's just... At the end of the day, this is the fifth movie of this Daniel Craig franchise, so you're probably in at this point. But what I will say is this movie, it's a mixed bag, <laughs> truth be told. Like, I am positive about this movie, but it is certainly a mixed bag. I want to talk about the positives first, though. This movie, I will say right off the bat, is that it definitely kept my intention. It is 163 minutes, and I will say that although it is all over the place, it definitely kept my attention because of such. And I definitely was intrigued by, you know, the lead character, James Bond, with all that he was going through. And in addition to that, I did think that the couple action scenes that did crop up were intriguing, to say the least, and very well filmed, too. I mean, this is a film that has really good cinematography. It doesn't match the heights of Casino Royale and Skyfall in terms of the look and the color palette and the camera angles, but but it's still good, for sure. Hans Zimmer's score also is good. It's passable, for sure. It does use some tempo music. Like, there is some tracks that do sound very similar to the tracks that he used in The Dark Knight. As well as, honestly, ironically enough, there was one track that sounded very similar to a track from Hacksaw Ridge, which was composed by Rupert Gregson Williams, which I found to be kind of intriguing because he was someone that, you know, honestly was taught by Hans Zimmer. So I thought that was interesting that Hans Zimmer kind of took cues from someone that, you know, was obviously a pupil of his. So that was interesting. But again, I do have to give credit to Hans Zimmer because, again, the score did fit the movie like a glove. It wasn't amazing amazing per se, but it definitely fit for sure. Great sound mixing too, especially the gun sound effects. I thought that those were quite effective. And um, the acting also is pretty good for the most part, I will say. Daniel Craig in particular, I mean, it goes without saying, he's great as James Bond. And here, he gives a really nuanced performance that I was a huge fan of. I, I, I really dug his performance. And you can definitely tell he's given it his all, which I really appreciated. Also, I have to say that I really liked the opening scene of this movie. The opening scene really sets the tone for what this movie's trying to go for, which is a unique tone. It's trying to obviously give fans the old James Bond, um, as well as the gritty James Bond, but also the James Bond of the 21st century, which is, you know, obviously that, you know, being a womanizer, it really isn't that interesting anymore, which I 100% am on board with because it's like, it really isn't. You know, that's James Bond of yesteryear. This is James Bond where it's like more settled down. You know, he's older, more wiser, you know, understands that that's kind of like young man's game and everything. And it's interesting to see his perspective here. And I, I really took it to heart and I, I really liked it. 
But the opening scene obviously doesn't play with that, but it does play with the fact that usually in a James Bond movie, you're used to seeing like a big action scene. And it, it wasn't. It wasn't an action scene. Um, there's a, a big attention to silence in the opening scene that I really liked. And also the new 007 also I thought was really interesting and kind of plays with what a lot of people are talking about. Like I know there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, if there will be a female James Bond. And I thought that that was kind of intriguing that they kind of played with that idea of how James Bond, nobody can replace him. But 007, that's replaceable. And I, I definitely get that perspective and can respect it. All those positives aside, I will say this movie does have some mixed things for sure. The big mixed thing I will say is that this movie is paced very oddly. I, I found myself in some instances to be kind of like struck by how fast paced everything was and then struck by how slow other things were and how the things that were fast paced should have been kind of glossed over versus the things that were slowly paced would have been a bit better if it was tightened up a bit. So that was something that I found to be quite mixed. But again, as I said, because the movie's so messy, I wasn't bored by the predictability nature of the movie because it wasn't predictable, truth be told. So because of that, I was engaged. But again, this is a mess in terms of pacing. Same with the tone. There are a lot of instances of humor that I did appreciate, but there were instances where the humor didn't work. In fact, early on in the movie, I was a bit worried when there were instances of humor that cropped up, didn't really work out early on, but as the movie progressed, the humor did fit the movie like a glove, honestly, with what it was going for and matched the seriousness as well. But again, there were instances that if I would be lying if I said to you that it didn't mesh well. There were some instances that didn't work. And then also, I thought that as the movie reached its crescendo towards the end, characters started just doing things. And I think that that kind of goes in line with the pacing of how fast paced it is, where characters just do things just because. It's not really something that kind of fits or kind of was developed or fleshed out, even visually. And that's the thing that was kind of frustrating. But I will say this, that's also one of the film's least of worries because the big worries I have with this movie and something that I just, I can't get out of my head is that the villains just aren't interesting. You have one villain in particular who doesn't reach the actual audience until I believe it's like an hour and 45, hour and 15 minutes into the movie. And again, I know the movie's two hours and 43 minutes, but if you're gonna have it where a villain's introduced very late, you wanna have them to be quite interesting. And unfortunately, the villain just didn't really do anything for me. And I hate to say that because I'm such a big fan of Rami Malek. And there's other villains too in this movie, but there's either one that's a henchman that's underdeveloped or there's another one that you've seen in another movie, but isn't really given that much time. Although I will say the arc of that character was interesting. But overall, that was a huge glaring issue in my eyes. Um, and I also liked the ending of this movie. I liked the ending, but I thought that how they got to it, I thought the execution was a bit wobbly. I like the whole dilemma that they give the one character. Again, not gonna spoil anything. I like the dilemma, but I thought that the execution was a bit wonky in my eyes. Again, maybe I'll give this movie a second view and I'll have a different uh, you know viewpoint because truth be told, Casino Royale, I wasn't a huge fan of the first time I saw it. But obviously upon second view and third view, and I grew to really appreciate it and love Casino Royale. I don't know if that's going to be the case with No Time to Die, but what I will say is that No Time to Die, it is a movie that I do respect and I do appreciate, and I can definitely understand why a lot of people seem to be digging this movie. I do. Um, for myself, again, I feel mixed, but I will be giving this movie overall a very positive review because, again, I do think that it is a movie that needs to be seen, especially as fans of James Bond, but it's a good you know, farewell song to this franchise. But, again, it's not a perfect movie by any means, and it's a movie that, again... I feel mixed about. Again, I really do. And that's why No Time to Die, I personally, I'll be giving it a 3.25 to 5 star rating, which for those who like a hot sauce rating, of course, gets the good old Frank's hot sauce. So yeah, I thought this movie was, you know, again, solid okay-ish. Mixed though. Again, I feel mixed. But uh, yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll... Catch you guys later.